So there's lots of things we could talk about with all these topics. But what I'd like to do is just summarize what I think are some of the more important points. So spectrum analysis is common is the most commonly used vibration analysis tool. The peaks that you see normally relate to the components within the machine. The shaft, the veins in the pump, the bearings and so on. What we do is we take routine measurements according to the PF interval or the rate of failure and we look for changes in amplitude we look for new peaks that are appearing, we look for sidebands and harmonics and generally we're looking at the pattern to try and tell what's going on and how severe it is and how quickly it's changing which tells us how quickly we need to take that maintenance action. So we therefore try to assess the condition from the pattern and the severity from the amplitude basically. Uh, but you know the waveform and phase, time waveform and phase gives us additional information as do other condition monitoring technologies. You know vibrations are condition monitoring technology, oil analysis, wear particle analysis, infrared, ultrasound, motor current testing are all routinely checking the condition of the machine. Now time waveforms show us what happened from moment to moment. It's like taking that movie and analyzing every frame of that movie. Okay, as the gears mesh together, is it going well? As the balls roll around, is it going well? It gives us that detail. Not enough people use this tool. I've heard all kinds of excuses and I don't mean to offend you if you're not doing it. Bottom line is it's not hard to measure it correctly and if you do measure it correctly it's a lot more easy, a lot easier to analyze the data. It shouldn't take you that much longer, but when it helps you, boy, what a bonus you've got that information. Now, phase, on the other hand, helps us to understand the motion of the machine. And that tells us about everything from unbalance to misalignment, looseness, resonance, all sorts of fault conditions um, that uh, can be picked up thanks to phase. And we may even see, or we often do see changes in the spectrum, but making sure that we've correlated correctly what those changes are to what the fault condition is you know potentially means the machine failing or not or getting you know unnecessary work done that sort of thing and my last comment I made the comment at the very beginning but I just like to repeat it some people use vibration analysis almost like a troubleshooting tool you know we're taking measurements just like old Joe used to with his screwdriver and just like an operator might hear that the machine has a problem. We are hearing and detecting problems that shouldn't exist and we are just often looking for the bearing faults, the thing that we think, oh well, that's what's going to cause the machine to fail, so let's focus our attention on detecting bearing faults. All of that is good. All of that justifies the training and the equipment all of that is important but you can do so much more because if we detect those root causes like unbalanced misalignment lubrication problems and soft foot and so on if we detect those early and correct them then the bearings probably won't fail and we depending on your industry we might improve quality we may reduce energy consumption and all those things if we eliminate those root causes but whereas vibration can be used to detect the root causes, we can go even a step further and say, let's use vibration to try and prevent the root causes. Let's be proactive. Let's put a force field around the plant and use vibration analysis for acceptance testing. Let's check, test that pump and the motor and the fan as it comes into the plant in agreement with the vendor. And we tell the vendor, if it doesn't pass our vibration test, we're not accepting it. Now you might think, why would you do that? Of course the brand new pump or the recently rewound motor, they're going to be in great condition, aren't they? Not always. And as soon as you accept that equipment, boom, it's your problem. And the problem may not appear for a few months and then, then there's a, well, you caused it, you did it to the machine the way you operated it, the way you installed it. No, this has got to end. You want the design and procurement process to be uh, done with a priority given to maintainability and reliability and operability. And then we use acceptance testing to make sure that everything that comes into the plant is good 
we detect the root causes and we use vibration also as a sort of a QA, quality assurance, quality control process. So when work does is done on a machine, we test to make sure that the work was done properly up to our standards.